Hey everyone, in this week's Python tutorial, we're learning about two simple control structures, the if-else statement and the while loop. The first control structure we're covering this week is the if statement, which is one of the simplest yet most essential control structures there is, and it's universal across most programming languages. It's simply a logic conditional. So you set up some kind of logic condition, and you can tell a piece of code to execute only if that condition is true, or you could also tell it to do something else if that condition is false. And you could even build upon if statements uh, with else ifs and etc. All different kinds of things to make more complex statements. And we're learning all about that this week. Then we're going to move on and learn about the while loop, which is, as you may have guessed it, a loop that continues to cycle through a piece of code while a condition is true. And as soon as that condition is false, it exits and moves on with the rest of the program. So let's take a look at some of the syntax of these control structures. The first control structure I want to go over is the if statement. And this is one of the simplest yet most essential control structures there is, and it's universal across pretty much every programming language. So you're going to have some kind of condition. I'm going to start by setting up some kind of variable, which I'm just going to call condition, and it's going to be of a Boolean type, which we haven't talked about yet in this series. But basically what a Boolean type variable is, is it has one of two states, either true, which you see here, or false. And in Python, you define true and false states by simply typing those words, but make sure that they have capital letters, because if you type it in lowercase, they won't recognize them. Okay, so we have this condition, right? And this could be any condition. It could be read off of a sensor value, or maybe we have some kind of count that's going in the background. Uh, whatever this may be, uh, just take this on an extra ab abstraction for now. So the syntax of an if statement, you start by typing if, and then you can type your condition here and then put a colon after that and then when you click enter the IDE is smart enough to know that it needs to indent into the body of the if statement the standard Python indentation is one tab or four standard spaces so what the if statement does is if your condition evaluates to true it's going to execute what's in the body here so let's say we have some kind of function some kind of statements uh, this is a uh, comment right here which we'll learn about in more detail in a later um, later video but let's say we print um, success when our condition is true and so this is an extremely simple kind of trivial example and you can see it, it prints success um, and then if we change our condition to false it'll not print anything because the if statement only executes when the condition is true now, what about when the condition is false? Well, as of right now, it just falls through past the if statement and doesn't do anything. But you can pair an if statement with an else, which you do by simply typing else, put a colon after that, and press enter. And now you can have it do something else. So we'll have some other function that executes here. So I'll say uh, we'll print failure in the event that the condition is false. And we can see that now when we run, it uh, prints failure. So that's all pretty simple. You can also do more complex uh, conditions if you would like. So like you can have an if statement evaluate multiple conditions. And these you can use uh, logic operators. So let's say I have a condition 1 and a condition 2. And they both have some kind of value, right? They're two different sensors, uh, like touch sensors, for example. If condition 1 is true, that means touch sensor 1 was pressed. If condition 2 is true, that means touch sensor 2 is pressed. Again, this is just a hypothetical example to put it in context. So let's say uh, they're both false, right? So I want this if statement to execute based on condition 1 and condition 2. We can do an and statement by doing this. So if condition 1 and condition 2, so this will only execute if both of them happen to be true. So if one of them is false, it will still count as a failure, as you can see here. Only when both of them are true, now, will this if statement execute and print success. Or you could also use an OR operator, which is a little bit less restrictive than an AND. So with an AND operator, both conditions need to be true for the overall statement to be true, the overall statement being this. Now we have them join with an OR, so either one of them or both of them can be true. And an OR statement is only false when neither are true. So as you can see here, this will print success, and we can even change one of them to false, and it will also print success, because either one of them can be true. Only when both are false 
will both fail. So that's what that's what this looks like. So this is just very very basic if statement stuff and you can make some really complicated expressions here and you can use parentheses to kind of nest your expressions to tell Python which should execute first. So like let's say I have a bunch of uh, conditions uh, condition 3 or condition 4 so what this would look like then is uh, you would read this as so so in the innermost you have condition 1 or condition 2 if either of those is true this evaluates to true and if either condition 3 or condition 4 is true this will evaluate to true and if both of them are true then the if statement executes so what this means in terms of logic and how the program would work then is that um, if either you only need one from condition one or two and one from condition three or four but both at least two of those to be true for this if statement to execute that's kind of like uh, that's just walking through the logic of how it works yeah but this is just a very simple uh, if statement but we can expand on this a little bit to make uh, a more complex control structures an else statement always pairs with the most recent or nearest if statement. So if I was to uh, put another statement here, if condition two, um, print, um, let's say yay. Now this if statement is completely independent. So uh, only if condition one is true will this execute. This else statement is now connected to condition two, as you can see. So we can, uh, with the the consequence of this is that whatever this result is is independent of anything uh, that would happen later on so it can happen that we can pr print both success and yay or we can print both success and failure because if you have multiple if statements in a row like this they have the possibility of falling through so whether this is true whether this is false is uh, completely independent of what this does however what we can, another thing that we could do is we can do what's called an else if often abbreviated as elif and that is just done uh, by this so it's e-l-i-f so this is a combination of an else and an if statement and this is kind of the answer to what we had before now what happens is uh, only if this evaluates false will this be evaluated and only if this evaluates false will this else, else execute so in other words what the else ifs do is it eliminates the ability for the program flow to fall through so if this evaluates to true then none of the other following else's or else ifs will evaluate only if this evaluates false will the rest of these cases be considered so hopefully you caught all that but the more you practice you get with this the more intuitive it will become so that's pretty much it for if statements the next control structure I want to tell you about is the try and accept also known as exception handling this is an extremely powerful feature in Python and I believe Java has something similar to it but a language like C has absolutely no analog to this so a try and accept works somewhat similar to an if statement so the syntax works like this so you have a try with a colon and then it will indent and you'll have some uh, functions or statements in here so you'll have it do something and then a try every try must always have an accept that follows so unlike the if statement where the else is optional a try must be paired with an accept and the accept also has to have some kind of statements or technically it can also be uh, it can also be empty uh, that's okay but the accept must always be there now the reason why you would use a try and accept is because you can use it for error handling so what the code will always try or at least attempt to execute the uh, statements that are contained in the try however if an error occurs or something impossible happens like let's say you try to divide by zero uh, the program will then skip over every statement in the try and execute instead all of the stuff that's in the accept which is really awesome if you're uh, doing things like error handling or you're you're programming something that you know might not work or might be a little faulty so for example I have a set that I've defined up here called my set and what I'm going to do is I'm going to program this try and accept to remove some elements from this set so if the element is not in the set if we're using the keyword so if I do my set uh, dot remove hold on dot remove and I try to remove something that is not in the set 
an exception will occur, and normally that crashes the program. However, with the try and accept, instead of the program crashing and stopping, uh, we can move on and execute the things that are in the accept part. So let's say, so it's something that's not in there, so we have 34 in there, so if we try to remove 35, and in the accept we'll say, uh, um, oops, something went wrong. And uh, in the if if this does succeed, we'll say print success. Uh, oops. So let's see what happens. So when we run this, it says, "Oops, something went wrong because we tried to remove uh, the element 35 from the set, but it doesn't exist in the set. So an exception occurs." and then it goes into this accept to catch that exception and executes what's down here. Now just to, to prove to you that the exception is occurring, I'm going to put it outside. So this is what happens if you don't have the try and accept and you try to do something that could cause an error. You can see that even before it gets down here, it blows up and says, hey, there's a key error, this element doesn't exist, uh, stuff like that. So that's, the, that's how that works. And under normal conditions, I'll show you what that looks like. So if we try to remove 34, which does exist, then it'll just execute everything that's in this try bracket, and it won't even bother executing the accept. So this is what this looks like. You'll see it just prints success, and it finishes. This is extremely useful uh, for making a very user-friendly system. I know Python's a lot of times used for stuff like that, because a lot of times users you know, mess things up, and uh, we do things that cause computers to have errors. So instead of crashing the program, you want the computer to be able to kind of bounce back from that and tell the user, hey, something went wrong, or this is what went wrong. There are also plenty of other clever ways to use this. Um, I know I've used this in some very clever scenarios in uh, like 6009, which is our Python programming class at MIT. Uh, like there's, there's really a lot of cool things that you can use this for, but mainly it's for preventing errors from occurring in the first place. So that is what the try and accept looks like. The last control structure I want to talk to you about today is the while loop. And I think the syntax of the while loop is quite simple. And it does pretty much what you might expect it to do. So to write a while loop, you simply write the word while, and you'll see it changes color to show that Python recognizes it. And then just like the if statement, you need some kind of statement that is uh, some kind of Boolean uh, expression. So I have uh, literally a variable that's called condition, which can be either true or false, and you want to follow that with a colon. And all the same rules apply uh, for making a logic statement for uh, the while loops condition. So after you press enter, it's going to indent, and everything that you program inside of this indented region will be looped within the while loop. So we have some statements that execute here. And just a quick note, if you want some programming to execute after the while loop is finished, like if you have some kind of break, uh, you're going to do is hit backspace and go back onto the same indentation level as the original while. And now these statements that are down here will execute when the while loop is finished. Anyway, let's get back to the while loop. So this, the while loop will loop whatever is contained inside of it indefinitely while this uh, condition is true. That is why it's called the while loop. As soon as this variable, this condition, turns false, then the while loop will exit. Or you can also exit with a break statement, which I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. So if you wanted to make an infinite loop, you can say while true. However, I would, uh, I would advise you to be careful with this because you, um, you can do some not so great things to a computer if you're using a while true and you don't really know what you're doing. So try to avoid it if you can, unless you need to, because usually you can think of some kind of condition that can end uh, the program. Thankfully, in a uh, development environment like Visual Studio, uh, there are a lot of like foolproofing so that you really can't like destroy a computer with just a, a regular while loop because you can always kill it externally. But if you're using this in other contexts, it's definitely something to be wary of. So let's say I have this condition, right? Um, this is a variable. Let's say it's connected to a sensor, right? Um, and I'm going to say uh, print um, looping. So that, that's going to indicate to me that the, the program is looping. And this is essentially an infinite loop. So this will pretty much run forever until I kill it from the outside. As you can see, it's printing looping like a million and a half times. So I just killed that. I just stopped it. Um, so now, what if instead we had another variable um, which we wanted to uh, use a break? Now, a break is another way to uh, exit out of a loop. 
So we can even actuate this with an if statement. So if exit loop ends up being true, then what we'll do is we'll break, and a break always, um, a break always pairs to whatever the nearest while loop is. So if you happen to have one uh, inside of the while loop, that's the one it's going to end up breaking. And you can nest all kinds of while loops and if statements within each other to make more complicated statements. Um, and so then I'm going to put a print right here and I'll say uh, loop exited, right? So right now exit loop is false, so this won't really do something anything special. Pretty much do just the same exact thing as it did, just say looping over and over again. But now if I say exit loop is true, like for example, if I was in this loop and I was continuously reading a sensor and the sensor's value is false and all of a sudden it met some condition, uh, then the loop would exit. As you can see, it only went through once because it saw that exit loop was true, and then the break happened, and then we exited our loop. So let's see a while loop with some kind of counter, right? So let's say we have a count going. I'm going to start it. Uh, oh, first I'm going to spell count correctly. So I'm going to start this at zero, and we can say while our count is less than 35, uh, let's do something. So we'll print looping, and then we'll say uh, we don't even need this break now because this condition can control the loop. But as long as we're increasing count each time we go around, so if we say count uh, plus equals one, which will increase count each time the loop goes around, and then as soon as count reaches 35, we'll exit and we'll print loop exited. So you should see 35 printed, uh, you should see looping printed 35 times. So what does that look like? We'll run that. You see it looped a bunch of times. 35 to be exact, you can count that if you want, uh, but just take my word for it, it's easier. And then we print loop exited, and it's all done. So now I want to quickly reconfigure this to make this, uh, make something equivalent that uses the break statement instead. So instead of making our condition happen up here, we can simply set this to while true, and each time the count goes up by one, and then in here somewhere, either before or after the count, it doesn't really matter, but it will affect how many times the loop executes. We can put an if statement. So if count happens to be greater than or equal to 35, uh, then we will break from the while loop. And this will do pretty much the same thing uh, that we had before. So if I run this, so it'll go, it'll do looping a bunch of times, and then print loop exited, and then we're all done. So that's pretty much all you need to know to get started with using the while loop in Python. Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my book. It's called Building Smart LEGO Mindstorms EV3 Robots, and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this tutorial helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel to get more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, leave it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.